Issues related to housing, land and property, more commonly referred to as HLP, arise in most crises, in conflict, as well as natural disasters. This is especially the case when a crisis is accompanied by significant displacement or when it occurs in a context with long-standing HLP grievances or challenges. Displacement in Somalia, for example, is primarily an urban challenge, with the majority of the 2.6 million internally displaced persons living in informal settlements in urban and peri-urban areas. With resources overstretched, Somalia's cities struggle to cope with the demands of their fast-growing populations and the added arrivals of people fleeing crises in rural areas. Finding affordable housing solutions in emergencies and protracted displacement situations is therefore extremely complex. With this in mind, this tutorial specifically focuses on first, the basic concepts related to HLP rights. Secondly, the relevance of HLP in achieving durable solutions. And lastly, practical actions aimed at informing HLP interventions in Somalia. To begin with, the concept of HLP includes the full spectrum of rights related to housing, land and property held according to statutory or customary laws. HLP rights are therefore about having a home, free from the fear of forced evictions, and a place that offers shelter, safety and the ability to secure a livelihood. HLP rights are referenced and defined in several international human rights instruments that include universally recognized human rights, particularly the right to adequate housing. It is important to note that housing is much more than a wall around or a roof over one's head. It comprises adequacy, which means fulfilling one's psychological, physical and social needs. In most countries, HLP rights can be exercised through different forms of land tenure arrangements, mainly categorized as formal rights, for example with formal documents such as title deeds. These, however, are rare, particularly in fragile contexts. Secondly, customary rights, which are administered by customary institutions, such as chiefs or traditional leaders. And lastly, user rights, which include a wide range of HLP options, such as rental agreements, rights of use, rights to plant and harvest, rights to access water sources, rights of passing through, and so forth. User rights can either be individual or collective. We need to remember that all persons still retain HLP rights regardless of the land tenure arrangements. IDPs living in informal settlements may therefore not possess a legal right to occupy the land, but still possess the right to adequate housing and the protection against forced evictions. In Somalia, however, security of tenure is fragile as there are poor land registries documenting ownership of land and limited capacity from administrative and judicial institutions to protect the various agreements over land and housing through the court system. IDPs and women are also less likely to obtain justice from customary or religious dispute resolution bodies. Women face specific forms of discrimination in relation to issues of inheritance and divorce. As women are excluded from both shaping the rules of the system as well as acting as decision makers in the face of disputes, this leaves them with little recourse in the face of HLP violations. Additionally, most IDPs live in cramped settlements under unsanitary conditions and without sufficient access to basic services. Majority also live on private or unregistered land and face a continuing threat of forced evictions from private landowners and gatekeepers when they seek to reclaim the land. In 2019 alone, more than 170,000 individuals were evicted across Somalia. Usually, those affected do not receive prior notice, their shelters are destroyed and they are left on their own to find a new place in the city to live. To address this problem, the Federal Government of Somalia adopted the National Evictions Guidelines designed to ensure that any evictions are carried out in a planned and legal way that protects the rights of displaced people, including by providing alternative land for resettlement and housing options. While this is a positive step, 
the government must implement its new policies in a practical way to provide concrete improvements in the lives of IDPs and facilitate opportunities for local integration. Further to this, HLP issues need to be addressed from the very beginning by looking holistically at short, medium and long-term solutions for both displaced and host communities. In practice, all actors would need to focus on first, by improving security of tenure and reducing the threat of eviction, by investing more in preventative measures in coordination with local authorities. Increasing government engagement in addressing evictions leads to positive outcomes. Eight in ten eviction prevention initiatives in Somalia, for example, have been successful as a result of direct involvement of the local municipalities. Second, by working with local authorities to identify suitable land for voluntary relocation and ensure integrated planning on services and assistance for both host and displaced populations. Third, by prioritizing localized alternatives for the protection of HLP rights by strengthening informal and customary mechanisms in the management of community relations and disputes, given the limited capacity and reach of the formal justice system. And lastly, by adopting a gender-sensitive approach to HLP, ensuring that women are able to claim their HLP rights. To conclude, working on HLP issues with a longer-term perspective necessitates a shifting focus away from purely humanitarian language and programming towards approaches that will take a more sustainable lens. For more information on displacement and durable solutions in the East and Horn of Africa region, kindly visit us at regionaldss.org. For HLP-related resources, please visit the Norwegian Refugee Council website at nrc.no or the Global Protection Cluster website at globalprotectioncluster.org.